Melville? Are you receiving? Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. I'm out. He's there. Welcome back to the mysterious island, everyone. My memory's How's not the situation? The best. Whatever Byron did seems to have sent the whole system into some kind of lockdown. I can't access any of the terminals, although I suspect Wong K still could. Why would that be the case? When Wong K connected to the data stream, the system assigned him a user profile. The rest of us are locked out, which means I'll need your help, Wong K, because a lot of stuff doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Check it out and see what you can fix. But please remember, what matters most is finding Byron. sound effect is actually pretty relevant. I just want to go quickly first before we like, head off to the next area. Have a look at the golden gates, of course. These golden gates are different from the other golden gates. Interesting. So, I think this... Theorizing... Um, I think that... This must be like a super puzzle. So once you've done all of the other golden gates, this, gold, this set of golden gates will open. Okay. It's just like listening to like the dialogue there, it's just coming in on the detail. Um, about like how 1K is the only one that's like not locked out. And it kind of like made me think about like how Athena's vision was to have like these 1,000 um, citizens. So it almost kind of seems, it almost kind of seems like preconceived that on the conception of Citizen 1000, Prometheus peers lures us to the island, like we are the only ones that can like delve into the knowledge ourselves directly. Um, I don't know, maybe I didn't articulate that very well, but it's something I thought about while I was listening to the dialogue there. Um, Alright, so we're heading off to the southern coast um, it seems. So let's head on to S1. 1K, I'm sending you a little software upgrade I put together that should allow you to detect which files will lead to a data stream overload. Unfortunately... You say that, LB, but I'm pretty sure it would be, uh, the game would pretty much suck if you <laughs> refused to go. <laughs> but, um... I, I guess it's maybe something we can uh, look at after the game, after we've finished our playthrough. Lee, I'm not doing this to help you avoid them. In fact, I'm going to need you to search for more. I'm sorry about that. But if we're going to unlock all the systems that aren't responding, you'll have to connect to the data stream, possibly more than once. It's the only way for me to get access. Software upgrade. Okay. In this area, there seems to be a problem with the the machine that makes the Tetromino bridges. That means you can solve the puzzles, but you can't activate the tower. Look for a lab that lets you connect to the data stream. I already found it. I'll send you the coordinates. That's like some... It kind of almost looks like a phoenix or something. Bizarre. 
Tetromino's treat. Tetromino's pizza is broken. It's a shame. All right, how do we get out of this place? We're down here. No, man. All right, so we have one of our stars here. This looks like a puzzle. These to be some sort of um, buttons that we're potentially going to find and then a combination that we will press. In my hunch there. Interesting. And we're dead. And there's our other star. It's another green laser puzzle. Okay. Good at observation, bad at swimming. Um, play this steals. Let's play this one a little bit different. We're going to solve the puzzles as we go around here, I think. Or oh, maybe we're not. Oh, hello. Interesting. have a teleporter. Now I wonder... Okay, we do retain items. Pretty nifty puzzle. I like that. However, we messed up. We didn't. We didn't mess up. Well, that's an interesting puzzle mechanic. In some ways, teleportation is one of the less surprising things we found here. In the last, at least, in that, at least, particle te trans teleportation was known to be theoretically possible. Of course, that's still miles away from these teleporters, which operate on principles that simply contradict what we know of physics. Transfer a matter from one location to another is instantaneous, without an observ observable wormhole or similar effect. There is, however, a release of exotic particles in the in the instant of teleportation, which decay within fractions of a second. What's so exotic about them, Melville? I'm sure the tech on the island from the puzzles to the megastructure is run by a small system called no Noema. Hence the Noema project. I've identified a number of observation commonalities with the software we use in New Jerusalem, enough to be certain that Noema is a descendant from our own software, although Athena and Cornelius appear to have graded it quite sensibly. 
Now, we must seems capable of interfacing directly with the user's mind at a deeper level than our own technology, although this functionality is not used consistently. Currently, guest users are locked out of all functions, so only 1K can access the system, although he's also locked out of any admin functionality. For now, at least. Alrighty. Need to get admin rights. Puzzle number two. Over the rickety bridge. The escape. It's a great escape. What she needs to do two here. All right. So as with most things, like these blue fizzes do just block everything, so we can't use the teleporters through the blue fields. Clever way are we going to? Okay. I think I see what we need to do. First, we need to start off by. Oh, it's close to here. But I imagine we're going to want to take this out. We'll take that. Port through here. That's a cool. Expedition Mega Thread. Please post your thoughts on the expedition in this thread and keep it civil. I think the powers that Athena has unlocked are world changing, and it's our responsibility to use them the lessons of thring for all living things. We know, we heard your broadcast. I think we're being tested, but Byron failed the test. What happened to Byron was an accident. Is there a difference ultimately? Yes, there is. No one's actually seen Athena or, Corne or Cornelius or Miranda at the megastructure. They could all still be aliens. I feel like that we need to at least think about the potential of all the new these new technologies. Maybe the founder is trying to teach us how to use them. Why is everything malfunctioning on the island now? Is it because of Byron? He is still locked into the system. His presence may be destabilizing it somehow. Or is it Pandora? She seems to want to stop the team. Honestly, I wonder if Pandora is just somehow malfunctioning. Like she's supposed to protect the megastructure, but she can't tell friend from foe. The choice of Pandora is a symbol as a symbol cannot be accidental. And the message is obvious. The megastructure is Pandora's box, and we should not open it. Interesting. Oh, man.
So I have a hunch. That's part of the uh, part of one of the stars solved. Let's continue our journey upwards. an expedition will pass by this island. It will seek to document facts and statistics to enumerate reasons for us not to look more closely. That is what we do now. We seek facts rather than truth, because truth might frighten and unsettle the comfortable people who like to sit in their conference rooms and debate which corners we should cut today. These people like to imagine the chaos that could come one day, like a comforting fairy tale of distant darkness. But they do not see the chaos that is at our walls right now, the chaos that also lives within us, a force that is both necessary and appalling. All right, let's continue on our expedition. Puzzle three. Through the wall. I agree, LB. It's really nice. Oh, hold on. I'm forgetting, like, the... My... So I can do that. So I think what I need to do is put that there. Oh yeah, but I can't. Hmm. 
Oh no, that's possibly it. Yeah, we've, we've bust that out. Now we can climb around here. should be a bit of a rip. Mm, not necessarily. So if I left that there, then I take this one out there. sure we don't need that, but why not bring it anyway? Probably these fences in terms of having teleports were successful because later and stuff don't go through fences. Maybe they wanted the code teleport slightly different. Feels unlogical. Why? Well, because of the way everything, all the other pulsing elements behave, I guess, is what you mean, curious, right? I, mean, I don't think it feels like natural. I think it's like a case that teleporters work on line of sight. So as long as you can see it, then you can kind of use it. Excuse me. But yeah. Number four. Looking through. Is that all gated? It is not. here though would be we'll take this now we only need that to there our box is stood on there so we could do this uh, we only need to teleport again we could just use that as a button like that got stuck on this one A couple of years back, we went on a scavenging expedition to an ancient industrial complex south of New Jerusalem. It was enormous, sprawling, an area many times bigger than our whole city, just dedicated to manufacturing. 
It was incredible to think about the sheer variety of things they produced. And it made me realize how austere, how restricted our lives are. You know how most ancient structures are overgrown? It's kind of pretty, but in a sad way. Well, this one wasn't. There had been some kind of chemical spill. I don't know if it happened while the structure was still operational or if something had just rotted through, but it killed everything. Even centuries later, nothing could grow. It didn't have to happen that way. And history doesn't have to repeat itself. But we do have to remember that it did happen once. In the early days, humankind lived in a world of unexplained wonders and terrors. The so powers of the elements were so understood in terms of gods and one. spirits. After all, how else could one explain thunderstorms and earthquakes? But as the realm of scientific knowledge expanded, the realm of the mystical began to shrink. The sacred grove, as Hegel wrote, was reduced to mere timber. But as superstition retreated, another thing was lost, meaning. In a purely mechanical universe, people yearned for the comfort provided by gods and spirits. But there was no way back. But what about the beauty of the universe? The perfection of everything around us, couldn't they see that? I'm not sure I can see that, Miranda. But I do think there was another way, a way forward instead of back. Faith not in an invisible world, but in ourselves, in each other, in the inherent value of consciousness and civilization. They never really found it, but I think that in those last months when their whole species was dying, they caught a glimpse of it. And that's how your mother was born. Interesting passage. Minimalism. First. Bring the teleporter down. Maybe not. that there.
yes, I can drop down here. Oh, clever. Thing. Oh. Yeah. Very clever. What's that hitting? Unfortunately, I think I have actually got myself stuck. It's probably just my settings. Team spend. It's fine. All right, let's reset. I clearly um, nerfed the graphics, the engine settings far too hard. All right, so. We were right up into a point. I need to bring that connector down here. Um, oh, I somehow dropped the fan. Helpful. Pretty sure Let's leave this here. How powers that? Okay, I was wondering what that powered. That's fine. I just have to stand on this, right? Then I can go back to the teleporter and pick it up. And then I can drop back down. And there we go. Almost breaking it. 
I'm glad to see all those overloads haven't damaged your logic circuits. What is freedom? Is it merely to be ruled by those who speak one's language or share one's customs? No, that is merely a more convenient servitude. Is it to have no obligations, no loyalties? No, that is not to be free, but to be alone. What a freedom from hunger and thirst. Here, we are closer to the truth. For freedom requires life. But one may have all the meat and all the wine in the world and still not be free. The most important freedom of all is the freedom to speak one's mind, to make one's thoughts public. You need to take the jammer through, just put the teleport on the button, you can still see, still fire sight it. Okay. What I don't is know if freedom? I missed some of that, so I'm Is it to merely it. to be ruled by those who speak one's language or share one's customs? I thought I could get around no. there, that's why I kind of went... That is merely a more convenient servitude. Is it to have no obligations, no loyalties? No. That is not to be free, but to be alone. What a freedom from hunger and thirst. Here, we are closer to the truth. For freedom requires life. But one may have all the meat and all the wine in the world and still not be free. The most important freedom of all is the freedom to speak one's mind, to make one's thoughts public without fear, and so participate openly and boldly in democracy. It is the freedom of the dissenter and the gadfly, the rebel and the fool, that is the true measure of whether a city is free. What is it? Oh, that's a bit rude. Now, I suspect Byron is still logged in, and his presence has thrown everything out of whack. Entire subsystems Yo, are locked Metro down, and What's everything going on, that depends on those subsystems Good is disrupted. I hope you're well. Happy 2024. There was a short burst of noise on the frequency we used to communicate, but that could have been anything. He taught me a lot when I was young. Nowadays, people just know him as the museum curator, but back then, he was closely involved with every engineering project, and he was brilliant. When he encountered a problem, he'd always remain calm and keep working at it until he found a solution. I wish I could be that patient. If I had to guess, I'd say so that Cornelius could still go back for anything they needed. He was always leaving on expeditions anyway, looking for materials for his projects. Um, I haven't played Portal 2 for quite some time, to be honest, Metro Ham. Um, never say never, but kind of been uh, spending a lot of more time on other things so yeah never say never it was over it was all really over for good i decided to take one last trip to my favorite place before symptoms got too much i can never forgive what they did to chokidiki chokidiki this incredible wild rugged place between mountain and sea with pine trees all the way down to the water the colors the vistas the sheer overwhelming beauty of it all and they just built all over it hideous hotels sprawling like tumors i've seen beach bars blurring their awful music across the sea even in that place it was impossible not to hate humanity for a little of it, for a little for it the idea of it returning to nature of the hotels gradually sinking back into the reed fields was moving and beautiful then i went back to thessaloniki and for all the ugliness inflicted upon that city the idea that people would no longer meet up beneath the car Amara or go for long ambling walks on the promenade or for crepes on Plataea 
Navarre Renu was unbearably sad. The idea of the rotunda just standing there, empty after being a sacred place for so many centuries, it made me remember that it's not just the beaches, the forests that are beautiful. The cities can be more than just streets and noise. Cities have histories and personalities. And that means something. Who am I? For, who am I writing this for? Do I believe there will be survivors after all? Do I think the crazy robot project I heard about will actually work out? Do I hope that aliens will come to our planet one day and wonder who we were? The truth is that I don't know, but there is something in love we do we feel for the beautiful things that we built, as much in our revulsion towards unnecessary destruction that matters. Why didn't our ancestors and they could understand that they could build in ways that make an area more beautiful instead of ruining it? Even if they all they cared about was personal benefit, wouldn't that benefit them more? In the long run, yes, but people rarely think about the long-term consequences, especially if there is an incentive to act immediately. And yet most of them were unhappy with the results. Couldn't they see that, that it was within their control to act differently? And don't worry about it, Pyrrhus. Like I've said many a times, your English is better than my Finnish. The Arans, can you point me in the direction to a better time of a better timeline? Humans are problem solvers. It's quite frequently associated with my friendly Alexandra Drennan. My friend Alexandra Drennan. It's because a meme on the internet used both ironically and not, though Alexandra, of course, is entirely earnest in her dedication to humanity. It's a great thought and vital to the understanding of our species. But it's also not entirely as simple as that. Take, for example, the recent extinction of the orangutan and the ens ensuing conservation about the dangers of unknown pathogens released by human activity. Most of us agree that a, pro a problem exists, and significantly, most of us believe that something ought to be done about it. So we've identified the problem and we've collectively decided to act. So why is nothing happening? That's a series of questions a great deal of effort has exp expended on raising awareness, but I would like to suggest that sometimes our problem-solving impulses can get stuck on the wrong goals. Awareness is not the issue. We've already convinced people that something needs to change. So if nothing changes, we have to wonder, why is it the will of the people not being translated into action? Text missing from archive. It's also capable of being devastatingly sarcastic, but that's a story for another book. Um, maybe the problem was that they didn't have enough hope. They could see the problems, but they couldn't imagine that one day these problems could be solved. It's easy for people to get so lost in problems of the present that they think nothing will ever change. They lost hope because the historical circumstances they found themselves in encouraged despair, but that in turn meant the conditions could not change. How do you go against history itself? Well, I kind of think like, whilst I agree, it's like nothing gets done sometimes. It all comes down to circumstances and resources. Like, yes, collectively people can agree to change, but if the ability to make those changes and the resources aren't available, then what are they supposed to do? The Passage Journal, Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day 372. Yemo died today. One moment he was there, welding a joint on the upper levels of the tower, and the next he was gone. <clears throat> One careless step, that's all it took. Athena brought into the dam, but even Cornelius couldn't help. Yemo is gone. Now there are, now there's only 12 of us. I think about Yemo every day. So do I. You did nothing wrong. You weren't even there. I was. Recharge, version five. <clears throat> this is a design for an improved charging station. Fascinating, but not relevant. Okay. May I ask why it's not relevant though, Melville? Is it not something that we could benefit from? Pretty sure that's where I died before, so I'm not going to reattempt. Well, I say I'm not going to reattempt, but I've just jumped down here. Not sure. There is another way around here. 
left side. Lots of deaths tonight. All right, I guess we go back. To uh, test the waters, so to speak. All right, so we're still missing one of the hidden puzzles or the lost puzzles, and we still get to find the lab, although the lab is marked on our map, of course. Oh, do you know what I've just realised as well? Dying has reset my green laser, hasn't it? So we'll have to go and do that again. I add. So we can teleport into there. I feel like we need to take one of these teleporters out here. There like that. Stop and take a picture. I never cease to amaze by the beauty of this planet. Yeah, it's definitely a. I, I feel like it's a much more lenient way of doing it especially it kind of makes it a little bit easier for players to kind of like solve and, and look for the extra stuff when you don't have to like constantly resolve puzzles and uh, to get like elements in the right positions and such so yeah i'm really happy that they they took that stance A VW camper van. Well, it's not what I wanted to do. A vehicle known as a van, an ancient vehicle camper trust for multiple individuals or additional equipment commonly used by workmen. Aerial warp. You could just throw that there. Problem solved. Oh, 
I saw like the outline of like the the bear. I uh, assume that's deep water or else. Okay, let's go get the hexahedron. Okay, so that's not... Expected. Teleport from here, that's right. And then once we've got the teleporter here, we can take both of these items because we're going to want to put that here because we're going to want to push the cube out and the fan. Then we're going to use. Okay. I think that should stay on top of the cube. Then we can teleport there and jump to there. And then. So that's the same height. Okay, we're going to want to do two cubes there. I don't believe we can do two cubes, though. Oh, we can. Yes, of course. It's the old thing we can do. Yes. Back to something we used to, we did with um, first Talos, where we actually put the cubes underneath to give us that extra bit of height. There we go. Solved. A matter of taste. When I saw this incredible build technology discovered on the expedition, it's given me an idea for something we could do if we had the resources and the energy. Are we ready for this? Taste buds? Taste buds. Seriously, how far have we gone without long. How far? How have we gone so. Let me start again. 
How have we gone for so long without something our ancestors considered so essential? Don't you want to know what the pizza tastes like? What's it like to eat chocolate? To have an apple? What's the deal with it's with fizzy drinks? I mean, come on. Sounds fun. The sheer range of new experiences. It's almost overwhelming just to imagine. Please, please let this happen. Why change ourselves when we are what we are what we are, what we were meant to be? You know we're all upgraded, right? This isn't our original design in the first place. And what's next? We start killing animals again just for our pleasure and taste of them. We cover the earth in fields like our ancestors did. Sub subjugate the natural world for all our agreed that's what that, actually what i was thinking when i kind of like read that initial like comment um like we're meant to be like this these new humans who are learning from our ancestors mistakes yet suggesting like potentially getting taste buds and then like bringing food into the equation almost puts us down at a path of like you know, like, like, like I just said, like, like farming, and the more you try, the more you want, and then you kind of like start to take a lot of the resources and stuff of the earth. So, um, I know what frogs taste like. I don't agree with um, Ekla there. I people say I'm not opposed to pleasure, but I think there are many pleasures we can discover within the limits of New Jerusalem without causing harm to the world around us. Well, no, but it comes down to a it comes down to a case for me, LB, of thinking like, well, if they um, they start going down that road, then it will lead to bigger things because they'll the the, they'll want more things. The, the need to experiment and try things will be there. So I, I don't know. In my opinion, it would just snowball. So, yeah. Right, we need to find puzzle six. I know what you're saying. It's like they don't need to eat food to survive. So it's like a little bit different, but... Translocator. puzzle here I guess you could call this this is the one that kind of I know I touched on it um, last week or the week before about that puzzle that reminded me of one of demons maps with the, all the fizzlers but this one really does kind of remind me of that with this little tunnel here the way everything works um, that's wrong I'm actually going to need to put this teleport on top of there first before I go that direction I'm actually also going to need to take the cube with me. Okay. Let's head to our next puzzle. Number seven, up the spiral staircase. Remote interchange. A 
there. I've got the teleporter. I feel like we need to bring a box into there, but... That's how we do it. Jump over the fence. I just meant to drop it. No. Okay, all right. There's a ladder. Thank God. We're good. I don't know why I even took that across there to be fair. We need to uh, take that, if I'm honest. Hmm. Every one of these clouds seems to contain exactly the same amount of energy. It's almost like a certain amount of energy is needed to open the Petromino puzzle. Weird. Ladder to be laddering. Okay, you know, uh, so the question of our relationship with nature has bedeviled us since the earliest days of our species, since before the first city was put, built. We felt that there was something different about us. Animals were were in, intuited. Animals we intuited were part of nature, we were not. But of course, humans clearly are the products of nature. Our history intertwined with that of every other species. In fact, the very notion of the unnatural is a contradiction in, ter in terms. Everything that exists must, by definition, be natural. So this view, no matter how common, is deeply paradoxical. The paradox has produced a great deal of confusion. Some proclaim as chosen by a divine power set above all other creatures and, and are just accused of arrogance. Others proclaim as, claim as sinners whose worse than other creatures and are rightly accused of misanthropy. Others yet try to oppose this binary by saying that we are, were merely animals after all, but that too is manifestly wrong in that no other animal is capable of having this conversation. It is in this, in the contentious issue of the impact of our ecosphere that the answer may be found. Other animals have accidentally terraformed the planet before, driving other species to, exist, to extinction. This is not unnatural. If we continued our current path, even to the point of changing the climate enough to cause the collapse of civilization, that would be entirely, that would be entirely in keeping with how animals behave. But there is one profound way in which we are not like animals. We can learn to understand by ourselves and the world. It is this knowledge that makes us fundamentally different. We have choices, we have control. There are many today who are afraid of the consequence of control and would prefer to ret a return to a state of animal ignorance, whether by blinding ourselves to the impact of our actions or by demanding we humble ourselves before nature. This is the response of an adult in crisis who wishes to return to childhood, but this can only ever be regressive in every sense of the word. To resolve the paradox of nature, we must act as adults, accept our power, and act consciously and deliberately in shaping the world. We must become nature, and nature must become human. This is the heart of the matter: lifting up the world rather than lowering ourselves. But why do so many people so why do so many people so badly want to lower themselves? Do they want to, or is it simply convenient to pose to pose to strike? Convenient pose to strike. Interesting. 